All right, so we got the car up on the lift and we removed the exhaust. If you need to know how to remove the exhaust, please look at this video. Or if you actually need to know how to get a car in the air and get the exhaust up, click on this video. So here we are. Um, this car is actually in very factory shape in terms of all of the heat shields are in place. So this is a good one to show you on. So here's our transmission. First thing we're gonna do is remove everything behind the transmission and then we'll work on the front parts of it. So the things that are in your way, heat shield, heat shield, heat shield, drive shaft. You also have the O2 sensor wiring that comes down on the transmission cross brace. So these are all things we're gonna remove. Um, heat shields are all tens and then eights on all, all the way around. Um, Oh, this has the little heat shield too that covers the, the drive shaft. So uh, I'm gonna get some tools and get that going and we'll be back. All right, so tools that we're gonna need for this. We're gonna need e-torques to pull out the transmission um, bolts. You can use metric things, regular six point sockets and put it over it. Don't recommend that. Go to Harbor Freight, spend 10 bucks, get a set of e-torques. Um, you're gonna want a wobble for some of the top ones. You're gonna need a 10, you're gonna need a 13, you're gonna need a 21 and a 21 wrench to remove the bolts in the guibo or the flex disc, how the drive shaft attaches to the transmission. You're gonna need a pick for what we call the bitch clip and other clips that uh, do the transmission linkage. You're gonna need a lot of extensions and I'm gonna be using all three drives, a quarter inch, three eighths and a half inch drive you could probably make do with one or both or some just simple things. There's something special about that. Um, and if you're not using an impact, I would definitely recommend doing it. It will make your life much better. So let's get to it. Heat shield's coming down. So with these, and I recommend putting your hardware in a place that you will find it. Or put it in bags if you're not putting it back together anytime soon. I'll show you with these ones. You can you can remove these, and I'm going to remove them so I can show you. But you can also just bend them to also get to the things you need to get to if you don't care very much about your car. These are a 10 mil. These ones are like a big nut looking thing. See, it doesn't take all that much time. I've never seen these like this before. I'm pretty sure this plastic is supposed to be behind the heat shield and somebody, the last time this car got a clutch, decided this was how it was gonna go. But I'm gonna put them back on. All right, so you can go a different, a couple different routes from here um, in order to get the drive shaft unbolted from the trans. I like to just unbolt the cross member and let it hang and then get this out of my way so I can get to the nuts on the back. So that's how I'm gonna do it. But you can also struggle with it this way if you don't feel comfortable with the transmission, that falling feeling, which you're about to see. All right. So there's three 13s on each side. And this is the dropping that I'm talking about. It might scare some people. We got food, so I think we're gonna do a food thing. I think we're gonna do a food thing. Right. And our camera's a little on better. All right, so we're back. We ate some lunch. Um, so, your O2 sensors. Take all those out of the clips. And with these, sometimes you'll take it out of the clip, sometimes the clip will come off with the wire. Either way, it's fine. And then, do both sides of that. Dangle that, and then inside here, oh, a lot of times these are broken. These are your um, transmission mounts. Um, they'll just kind of like shear off. So you'll get to this point and it'll like just fall off on one side. These ones are actually pretty good. So there's just a stud that goes into the rubber. So there's just a 13 millimeter nut on each side. So you just take that. They're at a slight angle. So it kind of holds itself. So if you just kind of yank on it a little bit. Once you have that off, 
you now have free reign to get to all of these bolts. So there's six bolts in a Glebo, there's three in the drive shaft, and then there's three in the transmission. You can move one or the other, just pick the same three. But you, you can either leave the Glebo on the transmission or you can leave the Glebo on the drive shaft. Doesn't matter. I like to do the, the ones that are on the transmission side just because they're farther in, so less of my gun is attached, is hitting the drive shaft. I didn't do this, but you uh, you want your car in neutral so that you can spin the drive shaft. But I'm pretty sure I did. I left it in gear. If these are bound a little bit, like these ones are, we just pulled the wrench on the other side. Push it. You get a little room, and then hook it on that side. Pull it up. All right, again, save your hardware on these. These bolts need to be this diameter, or you're gonna get some terrible clanging. And they also need to be the oval nuts, because if you replace these nuts, with nuts that aren't oval or locking. When they back out, your drive shaft comes off, spins around, tries to come through your floor into your car and will destroy the back end of your transmission. Not good. Now we are on to the center support bearing, the middle of the transmission. So these are a failure point in BMWs. If you have bad vibrations or knocking under load, it's usually this is what's bad. And this one is actually on the way of not being so good, but it's still kind of there. So before you take them down, test them and see if they have a lot of play. This one actually seems fairly okay. Um, it's not a big deal to do it at this time. It's not an expensive part. It's just a little bit of labor. The drive shafts are bolted inside. Uh, sometimes you need a press to get them off. That's another thing. It's two thirds. Good hold them on. You pull down here in a little bit and it'll pull this part away from the pin. On the drive shaft, there's this hole and there's like a slight bearing there. And then there's like a, a post sticking off the back of the transit that goes into. So if you're working on a lift, it's nice to just hook this thing. This is the shift selector seal. You know, it's, there's oil there. Those almost always leak. They're not too bad to replace and the part is very cheap. So if it's leaking and you're doing this job, I would recommend replacing it. This is your carrier and this is your selector rod. They both either need to be disconnected from the shifter or from the transmission. I like disconnecting from the transmission. So the selector rod has one clip on the side right here. You can get this with a screwdriver, pretty much anything. They look like this. It's just kind of like a C-clip. You just push them in. Um, with that, there are these yellow bushings that go on either side of it when it's in there. Try not to lose them. All right, and then that, you can just slide that out of there and just kind of leave it dangling. Now, this is what we call the bitch clip here at our shop. A lot of other BMW people call this. This one is a little bit harder to remove. I would get a pick that's shaped like this that goes a little bit past 90. And what you're gonna wanna do is hook into it from behind. I'll show you a little bit better once it's out. Okay. And then once it's up, you can just pull it. But so, how it works, if you look at it, is this goes through and then this pivots down onto like a, and locks on. But this has a lot of pressure pushing it to the side and you have this piece here that also ends up fighting you. So if you can stick this in here and kind of pry that away as you pull back, so it's like that, if you can kind of get that in there and pull back, you can get it out. A lot of them will break and they won't even have anything left on this side. Then they're a lot easier to get in and out. So once that's done, then the carrier can just pop out of the top of the trans and it's not there anymore. So everything on the back of the trans has now been removed. So what we still need to do is 
the wiring that's on it, and the slave cylinder that actually operates the clutch fork. So. There's more of the same kind of clips that are on the, uh, for the O2 sensors on the back, they're just slightly bigger. On this side, you have your reverse sensor. It's just a push and pull it off. And then your forward O2 sensors are hooked on also right there. I believe there's one on each side. Hmm. So this is an E39, an E38 thing. The crank position sensor is run off of the flywheel or the flex plate, depending if it's an automatic or transmission. But it's another one of those push plugs, so just push and pull out. Try not to break that sensor, your car won't run if you damage that. The driver's side front of the sensor. There's some, uh, some wood under this car. Saving that for later. So now all the wiring is removed from the trans. Now we have these two 13 millimeter nuts that hold on the slaves. And you can just pull that out and kind of lean it to the side. Uh, good time to inspect it too. If the plastic tip is worn through, that will decrease your clutch throw and have you like put the pedal farther to the floor in order to disengage the clutch. And if it's not disengaging enough, it can cause you to grind between gears. There's not really a good place on the V8 cars for it to get out of your way. So it's just kind of there. Um, now we are on to all of the Torx bolts. So E-Torx, E-Torx bolts, external Torx. So how this one works is you have, are these all E12s? There should be A10s on the top. Okay. Yeah, they look like E10s on the top. So BMW use three different sizes of E-Torx on transmissions. They use E10s, E12s, and E14s. Usually you will have some bigger ones on the bell housing, um, usually the 14s and sometimes, and then the starter ones are usually always 12s. And then there'll be like a couple tens hiding too. Uh, on this transmission, this engine, the, uh, the tens are the two all the way at the top. So your best bet with this is long extensions and wobbles with an impact. If your impact isn't strong enough, use a breaker bar to break it loose and then use the impact. Um, with this specific car, the starter is on the passenger side. So these e-torques thread into the starter. With these, I don't know if it's a setup for the right-hand drive cars, but they have a, a separate um, like ear for another starter to be on this side, but there's nothing there. But those bolts go through and they actually have a nut on the other side. So if you can't get it out, you have to just hold the nut with something on the other side to get those ones, because they're just gonna be spinning. But no. So I'm gonna start yanking those out. Uh, this is another thing. Leave at least a couple in until you're ready to take it out and get a friend or uh, a transmission jack or something to hold the transmission up before you take the last ones out so it doesn't just come falling back at you and destroy yourself and your transmission. Okay. I'm just gonna use the wobble on all of them. You do lose a little bit of power with the wobble, but um, I think we're gonna be okay. That way I don't have to keep swapping it out. As I get to the ones that are more difficult to reach, I will go and start adding extensions so that I can actually come around the transmission. Just try to leave one on each side in until you're actually ready to pull it off. I usually leave um, the two that are not on the top but that are near the top on the sides because they're easier to get to. The top two are a little bit more of a pain to get to. And these are the two I was talking about that have a nut on the other side. You're sometimes able to hold the nut with your finger. On this one, it's a 16 millimeter nut on the other side. You just gotta kinda get in there however you can. And when I get the trans all the way out, I will show you where all of the bolts are so that if you're having trouble locating them, um, you can see it off of the car. Okay, so I think the only E12s I have left are 
the two that I want to leave in until it's ready to go. So I'm going to switch and get the two top E10s. So the best way to get these is go actually over the top of the transmission. Now we only have those two remaining. Gonna put the pull jack under it to just stop support it, it falling out. Um, if you're on your back in your driveway, put a transmission jack or a floor jack under it. Those are all of the bolts. All of the wiring has been removed. So kind of just look around, make sure you actually got everything. But there's not a whole lot to miss. So your next step is again. Good time to grab a friend. You can do this by yourself. I've done this by myself. It is not enjoyable. So if you have a friend, use them. Or if you have a transmission, uh, like one of the big ones that you can strap, do straps and stuff around it, those also work really well. All right. So there's this little bottom part here that sticks out slightly farther than the rest of it. You can pry on this slightly. Do not pry hard enough that you're gonna break it off but just kind of ease her on in. As the transmission starts to move and you get in there, make sure you're not prying on your flywheel. So you're just prying just on the edge. If you can see in there, you can see the teeth. Um, yeah. So that actually came off extremely easily and I think we are ready to move forward. So I'm gonna grab my trusty assistant here. Hola. Well, let's do it. You wanna lift it up? No, no, you get the, yeah. So what you want to do is go up as much as you can and go straight back until you're all the way out and then tilt. Your starter ear is caught on the center on the passenger side. Yeah, you got to bring it up and then rotate. There you go. The slave's kind of in the way too. Yeah. Slave is super in the way. Okay. Just bring it back up and then. Remember, I said earlier about the slave not having a really good spot? It still doesn't have a really good spot. So here are all the bolts, um, bolt holes on the bell housing that you can see. This on this side is the bottom. So right here is the bottom of the trans. So it's mirrored on both sides. So I'll just show you. So 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 10. Yep. So you have two, four, six, 12 12s, 12 12s, two 10s. 12 twelves and two tens. Um, and that's it. It's okay to store trans like this. It won't leak out. All right, so one thing that I didn't mention when we were pulling them out is if, if you look here, all of these uh, E12s, these are the two on the starter ear. On the starter ear. So, um, which those appear to be the same. Nope, they're shorter too. All right, so there's two that are longer than the other ones. Those go in the starter. So be aware of that when you're putting it back together. Um, that's how you remove a transmission out of an E39. It's very similar to an E34 and an E38. Ooh, I was gonna show you the difference of an E38. Um, so if you're an automatic guy, instead of the slave I have to worry about, you have this linkage set up right here. Um, so this is a 13 millimeter nut that you can loosen and you can pull this pin out. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here that you can reach once it's drooped the same way I drooped the manual. And then you have, always look for your, the transmission cooler lines. On this transmission you have one here and then one that goes in over here on the other side. Um, a lot of times it's easier to remove those from the front end and fish those back out rather than remove them off that. Do it at your discretion. And then, but besides that, it's identical. The same thing, the sensors, the O2 sensors, the bell housing pattern 
is identical because it's the same engine. Um, the wiring. Wiring is slightly different, but. There's the big. You have, you have this one. This is like a twist connector. You spin to, re to remove it. I don't want to tr try the lock on that one. We're not going to do that, but that one spins to remove it. And then you have two choices what you can do with this. You can pull the trans and leave the torque converter bolted to the flex plate. I don't recommend doing that. Um, instead, what you're going to want to do is you have this little plug right here. And then inside there, you can get to the back of the flex plate and you can rotate the engine with a 22 mil. I, I only had a 26, so that's what I was using. Might be a 24. Um, either way, rotate the engine. And I believe there are three uh, bolts that hold on the flex plate to the uh, torque converter. So then you can unbolt that and then pull it, pull it off with the torque converter and the transmission. Um, not really a how-to on the on the automatics, but just a little bit of info. It is much heavier than uh, than a manual transmission. You definitely need two people, and you're gonna hate your life. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, that's how you remove a transmission out of an E39. I hope that was helpful for you. In terms of cars removing transmissions, that is one of the easier ones that I've ever done. Um, I, I feel like I can do that in under an hour. Um, maybe people haven't done it before, should still be able to do it in under three hours, I would think, unless you run into big problems, but tools really help. I'm gonna be doing a clutch on this car. That's why we're removing a transmission. If you also need more information under your clutch, please click on this video.